Prepare for the extraction point. We've been briefed on all the important stories and events in the world of emerging information. Now, it's time to extract the data and turn it into action. Live from the SiliconANGLE studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, this is Extraction Point with John Furrier. Welcome to SiliconANGLE.TV. I'm John Furrier for the Extraction Point. Here, our, my guest today is Tony Colas, the Senior Vice President of Customer Service at EMC here in the studio in, in the Cube in Palo Alto, home of Cloudera, where we share our space. Tony, welcome to the Cube and Extraction Point. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me, John. Uh, you're in Silicon Valley uh, for EMC, and you're, you're running the uh, EMC business for customer service, which, right. which is hot these days because the market's changing, infrastructure's changing. Uh, tell us your role about you and your role at EMC. Uh, so I run worldwide customer service for, for EMC. That's uh, what you normally think of as the guys who go out and change disks and do the break fix stuff uh, and the folks who provide technical support services and all the folks who su provide services technologies like e-services and our customer facing websites. Yeah, I used to work at HP back in the day in the 80s and you know, they had mini computers and networks and customer service, you got to deal with all the enterprises, support contracts, exactly. all that. and. Uh, but today's changing environment we're living in you know massive change obviously you know there's all kinds of issues out there that we're seeing that, that are happening real time i'll see new platforms around conversion networking etc right. and then you got things like these these catastrophes like in japan mm -hmm. disaster i mean this huge issues what are the big market forces that you're seeing out there i mean out in the market what's the angle in the marketplace what's your angle on what's going on in the market today well you nailed the uh, one right off the bat which is converged infrastructure and i think as, as you know it, it feels a whole lot like the paradigm shift that we've seen once or twice in our lengthy careers <laughs> uh, from cl you know client server yeah. and things like the emergence of the internet this whole notion of converged infrastructure in the data center is really transformational across the industry and happening very very quickly from a technology platform stack um, so that's certainly transformational in the industry and EMC is you know fortunate enough to have a decent play in, in that space which is, is very good position to be in. Uh, you mentioned another one, which is uh, the big data. This is this big leap forward for um, data warehousing and business intelligence, which has now gone to some inflection point where the value it provides is just a whole lot more than it has been in the past and is really, really taking off. Uh, the third is uh, with things like the data domain space, uh, the acquisition that EMC made uh, a little more than, than a year ago. Which Local is, VC funded that NEA, exactly. was funded that here, big data domain. Exactly, and uh, you know what a rocket ship uh, that's been, along with these other two uh, market areas. These are really they own backup. Uh, They're doing the d disaster recovery too. Do they is that part of their deal too? They do. That's and it combine it. We, EMC combined it uh, like uh, the other players in the industry with some of the other um, du duplication, backup, recovery, and some of the bricks and mortar kinds of things, which are very very useful in, in uh, disaster recovery. So what's the biggest force in the marketplace? I mean, honestly, you know, you're in a business where, you know, you have to have things pretty much five nines. You get to service customers, there's escalations, all kinds of processes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those things you mentioned, those are disruptive forces. Yes. Um, which one's the most disruptive in your mind, and what is it disrupting? Uh, well, I think, you know, for the one that we have that seems farthest along the inflection curve is this converged infrastructure, though I think the other two, the big data and the things in the data domain space are maybe 12 to 18 months behind. But the thing that's really just seems to be very interesting to me for the converged infrastructure thing is, is the value proposition is not the normal value proposition, you know, we're talking about... What do you mean? The, you know, the what we're trying, the way we're going to transform, our customers see this potential to transform the way they actually spend their money on IT. And, you know, I've been in this business a long time where you talk about squeezing two or three percentage uh, out of your capital budget here and getting operational efficiency here. And when you look at the the conversations around converged infrastructure and uh, the new data center technology, we're talking about much, much, much bigger chunks of return. And that scale of the value proposition is just 10x what it has been for other types of technology initiatives. So translation, if I can translate that uh, customer speak into, or EMC customer service speak into reality is, what you're basically saying is the numbers are so massive that it's re-engineering a, a lot of change. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, there's, there's big benefits, not little micro. Oh yeah, yeah. Do some efficiency here, and you know, don't buy paper clips here and there, kind of thing. But more of radical numbers. That's exactly right. And you know, the interesting 
side angle to it as uh, you know the psychology of it it also seems to appeal to a long held aspiration of the CIO community you know they spend 95% of their time keeping the lights on on their on their major systems and have been pressed by their uh, their own customers within their own organizations to spend more of their IT dollars on things which are actually transformational for the business they want to be able to do that. That's both something that they're getting pressure to do and that actually they'd like to do rather than just feeling like they're keeping their lights on. So those combinations of things about this fundamental value proposition and then there's this fundamental appeal for people who are professions or seem to be. That's pretty consistent. I'm doing a panel actually this week where you know, we're talking about cloud in particular and which also is about conversion networking. And, and mm. we, we cover HP, which big into conversion networks with Donatelli, ex-EMC <laughs> guy uh, heading up the, the charge over there. So a plug for Donatelli over there. Um, <laughs> Is that there's economic benefits that's 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 attractive, but there's also value creation or extraction opportunities for these environments where mm -hmm. it's not only an economic benefit, but there's value uh, opportunity, value yeah. creation, right. new services. Um, can you talk a little bit about what's happening there in the market and forces on the value creation and economic side? Uh, and is that true? I, I think so. I mean, you know, there's so much demand for the, to get more out of the technology dollars, and you know, if you ask most of the companies, you know, what would they do if they weren't spending money keeping the lights on and what kinds of value they could get from the data that they have from their customers and from doing business, they, they don't really have any problems coming up with this very long list of high value things that they'd like to get to, but they've been feeling hindered uh, based on their infrastructure costs. Yeah, and a lot of people have been saying IT has been kind of in this 10-year slump. Mm. You know, a lot of do more with less has been the, the, the drum that everyone's been banging on exactly. for, you know, 10 years. And it's kind of depressing. I mean, people that I've talked to in IT are like, you know, it kind of, it's kind of been depressing. Right, exactly. You know, it's like, come on, where's the, where's the sexy new toys and the iPad and this new stuff's coming around? So this is kind of a rejuvenation of, of IT. That's, I mean, the, so that's my point. Is it's like, God, the, the CIOs have been waiting for something <laughs> like, like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I can actually use open source software with Cloudera or do stuff with Greenplum mm -hmm. to do stuff exactly. and get these projects off the, out, out the door. And I totally agree. And I think, you know, I think my, my angle on the market is, is that it's really hot right now and you know, there's new opportunities to create new processes to change the value chain and deliver the same objectives with, with, for less and with more value. Mm -hmm. So you know, hot market, Congratulations. Thanks. So let's talk reality. You're from your you're a business executive, mm -hmm. SVP, you report to the to the big dogs at EMC. Right. Um, EMC's a tough company to work for. They have high standards mm -hmm. uh, in customer service. It's pretty well known in the in the business. Um, but EMC's known as a storage powerhouse. Yep. Clearly. But now you guys are morphing into a tech giant category. Joe Tucci said uh, um, that you guys now are the the went from the big fish in the pond to the smallest of the bigs right. at the analyst meeting in New York. Um, so it got to change the game a little bit for you, dealing with a different set of customers, mm -hmm. new product lines. Uh, what's the update on the business side from your standpoint? You know, and obviously, you know, breaking, you know, breaking records with the, with the big show, but what's happening with EMC service business? Well, it's a, uh, it's a, you know, it's certainly analogous to your CIO thing where, you know, storage is important, but not particularly necessarily the sexiest thing. So for uh, a services guy uh, to be able to have a few more rocket ships in flight with converged infrastructure and big data and the things that data domain doing and to exercise uh, you know, management skills associated with explosive growth, man, that feels good. That really feels like a really, really good thing. And, um, f you know, for us, you know, we've got this, as you said, these, this very deep, true service culture DNA that's uh, really been a differentiation for EMC for a long time. And, you know, my challenge and my, career, uh, my uh, charter is to make sure that we continue that legacy with these new areas that we're going into. So that same, you know, best in class. You still got the multi-vendor issues. You got to deal with the whole yep. conversion networking. I mean, what in conversion networking in particular you think is the hottest opportunity for you right now? I mean, honestly, um, you know, Michael Capellas was interviewed by mm -hmm. me at the uh, New York event, and he said that conversion networking was the real deal and that it's probably one of the most exciting things he's seen mm -hmm. in a trend for 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the hottest thing that you're seeing in that with regard to that? 
Uh, well, you know, I really look at this as an opportunity to, you know, add a little fuel to the rocket ship here from the services angle. And the way we're choosing to do that, you know, I, I heard I've Michael speak about this a couple of years ago, and frankly, one of the people that was most uh, sparking, that sparked my interest the most, was listening to Paul Moritz talk about this with Joe Tucci about a year and a half ago, and it was literally this epiphany in my head about what what this really meant when you're getting back to like this value proposition thing and the scale of it. And um, for, for me, what I see is, is like, I don't want to just adapt to this market opportunity or get ready for it from a services thing. I want to see if I can add some more fuel to this rocket ship. And so f what uh, I've What's that fuel? The fuel for us is to work with VMware and Cisco and pr act like one service organization. Because for us, that's what converged infrastructure is, the virtualization along with the um, the, the VC stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. And so we created this joint venture, VC, the virtual compute environment. And Intel's now in that. Yes, they are. They are a minority shareholder in that. They are indeed. And um, what we... Vice? <laughs> V-I-C-E? Oh, that's a good one. Vice. That's a very good one. What's your tech vice? Intel's now in it. We've got a new acronym. It's not VCE anymore. It's official, breaking now on SiliconAngle.com. It's Vice. <laughs> Trade one vice for another. That's the metaphor. <laughs> so Intel is now invo involved from they, what, what, what he told me. That's right. Okay. So. And so for us in the service organization is to for us to do really act like one service organization. So I've reached, reached out about a year and a half ago to my colleagues at Cisco and VMware, the services execs, and said, how do we do this? It's got to be more than just a multi-vendor service agreement and a collaboration agreement. What can we really do to manifest this as... Uh, one service experience and what we found is is that it really has been if it's not like this same uh, sentence as asking about the value proposition of the products the v-block products it's the second thing like great I understand what those products are going to do and how they can impact and fundamentally transform the way we do business how you're going to service it and how you're going to support it. it's literally the second thing out of their mouth and so that's what our real angle has been is just like let's work together in a very real way to be one service organization to the customers that choose to go with VCE for converged infrastructure. And how's that working for you? Any success stories? I mean, hmm. you guys aren't going to compete with the channel. I mean, there was some nope, channel conflict, right. you know, scuttlebutt. That's right. So uh, we are we are not. So the joint venture is uh, is up and running and is really helping us. Bring all of our great, all of our collective go-to-market um, energy and bandwidth together into one place, and also to uh, you know funnel things out to service partners. Because there's no way. I mean, that that's what the thing is. This market is too big, even with you know companies of relatively ma big mass like Cisco, VMware, and EMC. Yeah. We're not going to get out this market on our own. So we have to go through partners, and we have to make that uh, make that really. Attractive. And you have all kinds of test verification labs. I know that you guys have that with, with the multi-platform. There's all kinds of testing. Various certifications. Not easy. That's right for VCE. That's right, and we have uh, for the same thing on the service side. We uh, have joint labs that we work together. We don't want to recreate the wheel. We've created this very cool technology that lets us actually collaborate together on service requests in ways that aren't normal. You know, so that we're all able to do it at the same time and without having to use a you know a common yeah. CRM system. So some pretty cool things that we're doing there together for um, to great the service experience. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.tv. Uh, my guest today is Tony Colas, the SVP, Senior Vice President of Customer Service for EMC. Um, customer service is changing in today's marketplace with new tools, um, social media, social networks, mobility, open source software, new tools are emerging, new customer experiences. Uh, Tony, talk about with me the conversation around um, touch points. Obviously, mm -hmm. in service, you have customers, you, you have processes and yep. their you know, paths and processes, escalation, et cetera. But now you have a new set of uh, data coming in from, from customers. Yep. New service of channels possibly emerging mm -hmm. in this new social web. People are on Facebook saying, hey, yep. EMC this, EMC that. People are on Twitter you know, tweeting about all kinds of things. Yep. What do you do? Do you just <laughs> go after it? I mean, you have you know the, the forums over certain... Take yep. us through that. I know you handle this, the, the E side of the business, e, you know, the E ser mm -hmm. service, which is the all the EMC knowledge banks and all the knowledge centers and the forums. That's and, right. You know, your intranets and your relationship with Jive, which is the software that you guys use, and, and your case study on their, on their website. Mm -hmm. So you're pretty proficient on social. 
Uh, you've been doing it for four years or so, you mentioned yep, to me that's uh, right. prior to this. Um, what's going on? I mean, we know about Comcast. We know about all these kind of proof of concept stuff going on. And you know, real hype depends. How do you feel about this? It, it, it's real. And uh, the idea that we, you know, the, that we have is to be able to interact with customers in whatever channel they happen to prefer, which is not the same in every circumstance. So when they've got something really hot going on and you know that's one angle and one media or one channel that they want to work with us, when they're in a more relaxed frame of mind, they may want to interact with us in another frame of a uh, set of tools, and which may be more social and less, uh, yeah. you know, so what we need to do is be able to serve customers through whatever interaction channel they happen to want to and that's you know for the old school constituents among our customer base email it's, it's telephone it's still, email. That. It's still that we're old we use email <laughs> we still have like my kids suitcase. tell me you know you use email dad you're completely old and irrelevant meanwhile there are five thousand texts a day yep i don't know how they do it but exactly. uh, you know hey that's the new new world and you know it's cool it is if you can pull it off Right, That's and we're right. early on in this emerging market, so you know we know Facebook's growing like a weed. LinkedIn just crossed 100 million mm. users. Uh, LinkedIn more business oriented, social. Facebook more social. Um, this is a one to many relationship that used to exist, EMC to many clients. Now yep. it's many many. Yep. How do you deal with that? I mean, it's a, it's a actually a very interesting area here, and that there's some uh, you know a lot more work to be done on uh, um, how you actually connect with communities of interest that self-identify and uh, be able to you know have people who are good at what they in that peer group um, get identified promoted stay there and actually feel like they yeah. want to do it in the way that they want to right and, yeah. which is not the same thing all the time uh, one of the other kind of very interesting things which we think is a real opportunity that we've I think we've actually touched into the actually gotten this really going is being able to connect skill sets to the types of problems or issues that customers have faster than we used to before. And that's been a very, very interesting angle for us. It's, you know, more, you know, the old school model is going through the... Ticket, get a ticket, yeah. wait, if sales rep escalates to the top of the line, right. all these normal analog ways. Exactly. So we've got this uh, services technology that... that starts looking at customers as they start interacting with us in one channel or another on the web and starts identifying potential skill sets in our service organization that are best equipped to handle that and their availability uh, and, and connect those things. So when a customer either will either proactively do that or when they actually physically say, I need some help, that we are able to get the, the best equipped person to, hand, to work with them as fast as possible. That's a very that's been working out well for us. We've been seeing customers really, really, really like that. It bypasses all of the things that they don't like about the older yeah. school models. Yeah, yeah. What about um, Twitter? Have you guys done any customer support changes like ticketing with Twitter social CRM kind of things? Or? Very light, very light. And you know, one of the things that we want to understand better is, is again, the, the, what are those channels that customers want to use? What would they use Twitter for? And, and how represented are they amongst our customer base? So that's something that we could Well, we have better. a pretty big Twitter following out there for the folks out there. Why don't you share with them what you're looking for? Is there anything particular that you'd like to see answered that are challenging? I mean, we're at the top of the first inning. Some say bottom yep. of the first inning, whatever, maybe top of the second. Yep. Um, well, you know, social media really has not delivered the juice mm -hmm. that some claim it would. There's a lot of proof of concept involved. We know that. But, I mean, what is, what's missing? What do you need? Well, I mean, I, I'd really like to know whether the things like the, the uh, technologies and tool sets like Jive actually suffice for what customers want to do in, in that kind of environment or whether they whether there's a richer experience that lets them tell you know ex expose more about them and more a profile about them that also then is benefit to other people who are out there saying that's the guy who knows this particular topic and he's at the water cooler right now is that a value that's a particular thing that's a value would how would customers use things like Twitter to engage in customer service? What scenarios would it actually service them best? Those are some of the kind of key things that we. So, like and to basically, what you're saying is you need use case mm. data forecasting. Yep. It's so early, you don't even actually know the use cases. Exactly. Most, most people don't. That's right. Yeah. You know, we. You know, one of the. You can't buy a product for a use case you don't know exists. Right. <laughs> so figure out the use cases, right, and then match the product. Exactly. 
And you know, one of the other angles that I think has got a lot of potential is, is again, it, it's using our eating our own dog food, which is the um, the uh, big data notion. I mean, we collect in the process of interacting with our customers massive amounts of data, and frankly, I see a huge opportunity for us to be able to mine that data into things like uh, risk analysis of particular technology configurations. Do you expose that scenarios. data publicly, or um, is it only internal behind the firewall? Uh, for, yeah, it's in, mostly internal. But you can see how this could grow so that you would actually, yeah. first of all, the next point would be to deliver it to partners yeah. who are servicing. You could say, we see this risk profile emerging in your customer base. Maybe you should get ahead of it. Here's something that you can do about it and so on. So that's you know that's the kind of sphere. Of that's, a, that's a business analytics equation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we've had ClickFox on uh, the show. Marco Pacelli, uh, folks out there at clickfox.com is a site you want to check out. They've been using big data analytics to identify fingerprints and customer relationships. Mm -hmm. So they can actually pull up different, one customer through multiple channels. So it's kind of flattening the silos out in terms That's of... cool stuff. In terms of, and, and they're probably one of the most progressive companies that I've seen out there. So um, we're following them. But they, they're pushing the envelope. This is like, they have Sprint as a customer. So they can go in and say, hey, when someone calls in, they just came from the website. Oh, by the way, they come in another way. They hang up. They're a frustrated customer. You can see a life, life cycle of customer experience. That's a whole other angle. That's a great, that's a, some very, very cool stuff there. Yeah, but I think I'm, I'm into the big data. Um, what do you think about big data? I mean, you know, big data is a, a, now the big theme in the industry. You guys are getting behind it with Isilon, Greenplum. Mm -hmm. um, you have a high-end offering. Yep. Um, complementary to the symmetric stuff. Um, is that rock on your world a little bit? You mentioned it's a rocket ship. Um, is it turbulent? Yes. Is the integrations going okay from a service perspective? Those technologies fitting in with your organization? They are. I, I think we've gotten better at doing M&A because we've just done a lot of them and, and, and compared to how clumsy I felt we were with some of them four or five years ago, the ability to bring in um, new colleagues in a way that preserves what they're good at and still providing the leverage and scale of, of EMC is something that we I think we, we've gotten a, a much better at. Um, you know, frankly, I think right now EMC has almost as many people in the Bay Area as it does in the East Coast, which is, you know, an, a kind of an astonishing transformation for a company like EMC. You know, there's the data domain folks. If you want to include VMware, that makes it even a fundamentally different thing. Yeah. But you've got data compute and all the folks over, like the, the former Documentum people still around. But it's going very, very well. But it, it's, uh, to your rocket ship analogy, it, it's about, it feels to me about where we were with the converged infrastructure about a year ago. But it is really taking off very quickly. We're here with Tony Kolish, uh, Senior Vice President of Customer Service at uh, EMC. Final question, how is the social side of this equation, meaning benefit to users, the social angle to society, um, meaning customers? I mean, you have customers. Are they happier? Um, what is in being enabled by these new big trends that you see your customers taking advantage of? What's the benefit to them? I mean, what's, the, what's in it for them? Um, well, you know, as people who need to reach out for service, uh, it means that they can do it in the ways that they want to. And um, and if we're using the big data analytics correctly, it means that they have to do it less often because we're taking the experience that we have and feeding it back into the product. So, you know, the, that the, that paradigm that no customer, not needing customer service is the best customer service. That's making customers happier, right? So we just taking that out off their play by giving them products that work and but when they do need to reach us then and work with us we let them do it in the way that they want to and the language they want to and in the and vary it based on the scenario that they're facing